The Bible says they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. They had the hotness factor because they knew it because they'd been with Jesus. Right. Hear me, the Bible also says you'll know them by their fruits, and some of you are pretty fruity, but some of you need some more fruit in your life. Amen? Amen. Some of you got the hotness maybe inside your heart, but you need to let it out. Yes. yes. Right. Say, oh, Brother Conkle, I'm happy with Jesus. Well, notify your face. <laughs> Come on, brother. Well, I'm a Christian. Hallelujah. I'm holy. I'm righteous. I've got a whole list of standards that I don't do and things. And you've been there. I've been there. How many been there? A whole list of things to prove you're holy. Honey, you prove you're holy by worshiping God and serving the Lord. Come on. You know, but sometimes at Pentecost we get to the point where sometimes it becomes a show. Yeah. And people that jump the highest sometimes aren't always the hottest for Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. It's kind of like that couple that the fire has been gone for a long time, but they don't let the kids know. They still kiss in front of them. They still kind of hold their hands, but it's awkward. It's not theirs. Uh, it, it, uh, I'll never forget one time of, uh, but when I was married to a woman at one time in my life. I uh, never forget I was on my way out the door to get an appointment. And um, I went to give her a kiss because that was the obligation, you know. And I remember I was in such a hurry. I, I kissed her and I put my arm around to look at my watch. <laughs> and it ruined the whole effect of the kiss, right? Mm -hmm. Might as well not even kiss, right? Mm -hmm. Might as well. It just doesn't make any difference. So we need to make sure that our motives are right. Hear me today. The more intimate you get with Jesus, the more you fall in Jesus, the more powerful your praise, the more powerful your ministry, yes. the more powerful the miracles, and the more powerful the revelations will happen in your life. Amen. Yes. Yes. But it comes when you get close to the fire. Oh, I'd like to have a church that's shouting and dance. We'll get a church that falls in love with Jesus, and then it'll just happen. People will begin to dance and worship and praise God. Yes. Our job is to get people on fire for Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. What are some characteristics of people that are hot? Hotties. Prayer. People that are hot on fire for God, prayer isn't a drudgery. Prayer isn't a prison sentence. Sweet hour of prayer. Oh, yeah. it's alone. Yeah. For some people, it's, oh, God, an hour of prayer. <laughs> it's like a prison sentence. And, you know, you've heard it too many Pentecostals. They go into prayer and they say, well, I really don't want to get in touch with God, so I'll just, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> I wonder what Pizza Hut's doing right now. Right? Now, how would you feel if I called you up, Sister Norma, and said, Oh, Sister Norma, 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 how you doing, how you doing, how you doing, how you doing, how you doing? I did that for an hour. I bet you... <laughs> You're breaking up, brother Conkle. I, 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 I don't know what's going on. The cell phone's going out. Huh? You know, but but prayers. You know, it's 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 one of those. Uh, the brother had a prayer one time. He said, "I pray before I before you preach, brother Conkle." This prayer. He said, "Now I lead me back to sleep. The sermon's long and getting deep. If it should end before I wake, please someone give me a gentle shake." That's not the kind of prayer I'm talking about. <laughs> Prayer, when you fall in love with Jesus, and when you're really hot for Him, it's a delight. You can't wait to get home from work and say, Jesus, I couldn't wait to get home. I just want to tell you I love you. I thank you for a great day at work. I thank you for a job. I thank you for a wife, a husband, some kids that I can come home yeah. to. Prayer becomes exciting and wonderful as long as you're a hottie. Oh, Bible study and reading the Word of God. It was... Bible says the prophet talking about fire shut up in his bones. It wasn't talking about the spirit. It was talking about the word. Uh -huh. yes. right. It was like fire shut up in his bones. This is God's love letter to us. Yes. I never forget. I had a boyfriend one time in Arizona, and uh, man, I boy, I loved him a lot. He didn't love me as much, so we're not together. But anyways, uh, remember, he would send me emails. You know, you don't send letters anymore today. It's just emails. He would send me an email. And boy, I'll tell you what, I couldn't wait to get home and get on AOL.com and read that letter and reread it and print it out, take it to work with me, and reread it again. 
I love that I read every syllable, every sentence, look where he put a comma and period to see what it meant and try to extrapolate, you know, more meanings out of it than what he actually meant for it to mean. Hallelujah. And and I loved it. But I thought, oh my God, if we could do that with this word of God, yes. if we could say, oh, I want to look at every comma. I want to look at every period. I want to cross-reference verses. I want to highlight and underline it Thank and you. tell you what, this is God's love letter to yes, us. It is. And when you're a hearty, Hallelujah. it's not a problem uh -huh. to read the word. Yeah. I'll tell you, sometimes I sit down and read the word and I go through whole books of the Bible and just, oh, this is just wonderful. This is just wonderful. Oh my God! Yeah, you know, I, you know, I have my I have my disciple discipl discipline plan where I do at least a chapter a day, but a chapter a day is so little. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. I feel guilty only doing a chapter a day. I'm like, but that, I don't really got anything, you know, really much. I, I'm going to have to read some more chapters. But when you become a hottie, that's what happens. When you come to church, you can tell people that are hotties when they come to church. Now, Luke Warren and cold people, you know, don't put everything into it like a hottie does. A person that's hottie starts to sweat. You say, well, I don't want to sweat at church. Well, you sweat at work. You sweat in your garden, right? You sweat when you're painting your house. If you'll sweat for God's house, if you'll sweat for your, excuse me, for your house, if you'll sweat for your employer's house, you ought to be able to sweat for God's house just a little bit. Amen? Amen. Nothing wrong with doing that. Something about it. We've got to love everybody. We've got to love the church. There's an old saying that says, to live above with the saints we love, that will be glory. But to live below with the saints we know, now that's another story. Amen. <laughs> Something about it. we got to learn to get along with each other. And you know what? People that are really hot and on fire for God, they love each other. That's right. They forgive each other. Yeah. They support each other. Yeah. One of the things that I love about Ephesians chapter 6, the Bible says if a brother be overtaken a fault. Mm -hmm. So if somebody in this church gets overtaken a fault, the Bible says ye which are spiritual. Mm -hmm. Now this is the true marks of a spiritual person. Restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, right. mm -hmm. considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. So the truly spiritual people are the ones trying to restore the brother or sister that's fallen. Yeah. That's right. The carnal ones are the ones that's judging them, uh -huh. kicking them down, stomping on them, talking about them behind other people's backs. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. I don't know that didn't go over very well today, but I'm telling you that's the truth. That's right. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Begin to love everybody. I remember that old song. Makes me love everybody. What is it? Is that old time? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. It's what the Bible talked about being a hottie. There's something about it when it comes time to worship. You can tell people that have the hotness factor when it comes time to worship. See, in the Old Testament, there's all kinds of scriptures saying, sing and dance and clap and yell and play on stringed instruments and organs and high-sounding cymbals and timbrels and dances. There's all kinds of instructions to praise the Lord. Yep. But in the New Testament, there's nothing really much at all about praising the Lord. But the reason for that is because in the Old Testament, they didn't have the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. That's, right. That's right. So they had to tell them, come on, church, stand up and clap. Come on, shout, use the symbols. Come on, get with it, folks. But when they got the Holy Ghost, when they became hot, when they got that spirit moving inside of them, you don't have to tell people that are full of the Holy Ghost. You don't have to tell people that are in love with Jesus Christ. Now, come on, folks, let's worship God. Come on, come on, raise that hand up. It's just something about it. It flows from you. Yes. Man. It's kind of like a volcano. Mm -hmm. That lava is bubbling up on the inside. And you just got to open up your spout and let it out. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a sermon title. Open up your spout and let it out. Amen. Praise God. I'm going to head home here. If you're truly a hottie, you'll support your pastor. Amen. Amen. Now, hear me today. You don't get to pick your pastor. God picks your pastor. The Bible says God will give you shepherds from his own heart uh -huh. yeah. to minister to you. Yeah. So God brought you here. God put you in this church. Get behind your pastor. You're never going to agree with anything 100% that any pastor preaches mm -hmm. or any pastor does. I've had people come to my church and, uh, you know, they didn't like the way I did things. So they went somewhere else. And they didn't like the way they did things. And, and they're just always looking for the perfect church. I tell them, well, darling, if you finally find the perfect church, you won't be welcome because you're not perfect. And you'll ruin their record. Amen. Right? Uh -huh. Nobody's perfect. Your pastor's not perfect. No. But if you're a hottie, you'll pray for your pastor every day. Amen. You'll love him. You'll pray for him. You'll seek to make his life easier, not harder. Amen. And if you have issues, you'll talk to him privately and directly. 
Yeah. That's one thing I hate about sometimes people, they, they have issues. And, and I don't hear about it except through three or four people six months after they've already said it. You know, and, right. and then it's a mess. Talk to them. The Bible says this. Now it's up to you. Be on your toes, both for yourself and your congregation of sheep. The Holy Spirit has put you in charge of these people. God's people they are to guard and protect. You know, that's really what a pastor is. A pastor is a guardian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's a watchman. Mm -hmm. And it's sometimes really hard to tell the difference between a wolf in sheep's clothing mm -hmm. and an ornery sheep. <laughs> they look similar. <laughs> it's sometimes very difficult. But pray for your pastor. Bless your pastor. God himself thought they were worth dying for. Hear me today. God has placed an important obligation on the pastor. Listen to it. Some of you that are called to preach, you've got a call to preach and a call to ministry. Hear me today. Listen to your pastor. Wait. Learn. Uh, take everything in that you can. I've seen so many ministers that, that want to develop their ministry and they remind me of these things July 4th and I just hate them. But they're called bottle rockets. Oh. I don't know why, but teenage boys find them completely fascinating. Um, I don't know. Maybe some teenage girls too. Sister... Is it your tag that you find fascinating? I like big stuff. Okay. <laughs> you like the things that boom, right? Well, I don't like the bottle rockets because they don't. They, they, you know, you light them and, and they go up there and go in and <laughs> And that's the way some ministers are. Mm -hmm. They say, well, I'm, I'm bigger than my pastor. I've got a greater anointing than he does. I've got more wisdom and knowledge than him. And they've never done anything in their life. They've never pastored today in their life, but they know how to do it. Yeah. Come on. Now, listen, I'm not a pastor, but if you come up to me and say, Brother Conkle, I want you to do my heart surgery for me. <laughs> I say, well, look, I, you know, I could better look it up on the internet and I could try. You know. <laughs> look, surely got some self-help thing. <laughs> but I don't know, I've never done it. I want someone, if they're going to do heart surgery on me, I want them to, uh, Brother Gerald, to have already done it many, many times successfully. <laughs> I want a good ER nurse in there, too, making sure everything's going good. If you haven't pastored before, you don't have a clue how to pastor. It's a challenge, but be, get behind your pastor. Support your pastor. Old Noah, he had eight people in his church after 120 years. Can you imagine? you got more than eight people in your church, and you've only been here one year. You're more successful than Noah. <laughs> right? You're more successful than Noah. So uh, what would imagine would have happened if the people would have encouraged Noah? And say, hey, we're going to help you, Brother Noah. Come on, we're going to build this boat. Come on, everybody, let's get in here. Imagine if people join with them. Join with them. If you're on the church board, be a support to your pastor, not a hindrance to him. I heard about a board member that was in a church board meeting. And he died of a heart attack right in the board meeting. Died and went to hell. And didn't know he was out of the board meeting for three days. <laughs> <laughs> oh, glory. 